Hey guys, hope everyone's well. Sebastian Oakley here again, and we are bringing you photos and we do a photo review of the Leica M10R. Unfortunately, yes, you've read the title, the M10R has gone. Leica UK picked it up, and I had, but I'm extremely grateful to have it for three weeks. So thank you, Leica and Leica UK, for arranging that. It was it was just an amazing experience, and I really loved it. Um, unfortunately. I've already tried to record this once, this episode, and the D800 didn't record at all. I've got all the voiceover stuff, so this is going to be a bit of a mix match of things, so I'm really sorry about that. Uh, you're just going to be looking at the screen, me reviewing some of the photos that I really like from the Leica, um, some things that I wish I'd done differently, um, how I could have um, composed them and uh, done things differently as well. So yeah, without further ado, let's uh, have a look at the screen, and uh, I hope you enjoy the images. Right now, so let's just get into this folder and we will just quickly click on this one and we'll just, this is just going to be a simple in the Google, uh, Google, in the Windows photo viewer. So this one, this is the very first photo that I took on this camera and uh, I don't know, looking back at it now, I think I could have compositioned the, the uh, course light sign a bit better. Basically, I was walking down in the middle of the day, this was on a weekend, so the actual store was closed. It's one of those American Route 30, you know, places. Um, I just saw the lights and I thought that'd be a cool photo to take. Um, I really like how they've got the red and white with matches with the cause sign, obviously, America. Um, I just like the old style jukebox in the background, the tables. I just kind of like the whole aesthetic about it. Um, and I wanted to take it. What I probably would do, if I kind of zoom in on this, I'd probably... If you could see my mouse, I, I should have done this in Photoshop, really. But what I would do is probably crop here down to the window. So this window bit here that you, I'm looking at, I think this is just a, the pane that the light's reflecting on. I would probably crop that out just to make the image a little bit cleaner. But this is the very first image that I took with the camera. And uh, I don't know, I, I just like it. I don't think I like it because of the colour rendition of it. It's kind of, It's very much what I saw on the day. And I don't know, just kind of a cool image just to say this is the very first image that I ever took uh, with a Leica M10R, really. So this is a bridge um, near us. And um, I, as soon as I saw it, I wanted to shoot it in black and white. And the best thing with the M10R is that you can actually have the raw file and then also you can tell a JPEG to convert to monochrome. Um, it is not the same level as an actual dedicated monochrome sensor i'll say that right now um but it's very handy to have it's a very good feature to have within the ntmr so you have the best of, to me you have the best of both worlds you have the absolute amazing leica colors and then if you want to if you see something that actually i really want to shoot that in black and white you have the option to do that oh but just a quick note to say that all these images as well were um in capture uh, capture one pro um, I edited them all in that, uh, mainly because my Photoshop wouldn't open them for some reason. But I think that's more a me issue than an M10R issue. Uh, well, it isn't, so. Anyway, right, on to the next one. I just, actually, no, sorry, talk about this. I just liked it, the composition. I wanted it to come to feel like you were literally over, it was over above you and it was leading to somewhere else. I think I called this Sky Bridge or something like that on Instagram. And I don't know, I just, I just liked the how parallel all the um, pillars, I suppose you could say, were in it. And I just, I don't know, just just liked the composition of this one. This is, um, this was a test actually on the uh, the 50 mil uh, Summacrom, Summalux, sorry, Summalux. And um, just to see how sharp it was. So I think this is at F2. It might, it might be 1.7, but I think it's at F2. Um, saying that, why don't we find out? um do, 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 where are we okay 2.4 okay 2.4 this is um shot at 120th of a second at 200 iso so this is quite far away i think this is about five meters away from me when i took it and you know a two, 125th of a second to get this amount of detail you know i'm quite impressed with that i'm probably missed focus a little bit it's more focusing on you know this eye bit here rather than the actual top of it but I'm quite impressed with that. See, look, actually saying that, look, it's more here. So I've, I've basically, I've zone focused and I've just missed it basically. But hey, this is 100%, you know, genuine reaction to all these images that I haven't looked in a while. So it's, a, it's just good, nice video to do. 
Again, saw all these trails in the sand there in the estuary and uh, the mud, actually. <laughs> Not a sand. I wish it was sand. Um, and I just kind of liked it. And I just... I, this is where it really shines, like the, the really fine details. The, the sensor in that, in the M10R, just kind of... Just brings a, a really good punch. And look at the fall off here. So you can see how sharp it is. And then when we're going back off into the distance, just a, it's a really nice gradual fall off, which I really like. It's not, you know, here it is, and then all of a sudden, boom, it's out of focus. It, it controls, you know, the subject, the, the foreground, the background on the foreground really well, which I, I really like. And I, I was really impressed with the 50 mil. Um, again, I just saw this because it was it was green, it was colours, and I just wanted to kind of see what was going on. I mean. I probably, I, again, I probably missed focus just a slight bit here. Like you can see down here to the left, like that's really sharp and like the center isn't. But I don't think it takes away much from the image personally. And I, it was, again, it was just a, that was just a test for me to see what it was. But I kind of like all the other, the, the nettles behind, like being green. And, and, and I, just, I just kind of like it. I just kind of like the look of it. This is another one that I liked. Um, it didn't turn out as well as I imagined it would in my head. Um, and when I looked at it on the screen, I thought it looked better than it did when I took it to the computer. Um, but quite a few people kind of liked it on Instagram. So I thought, well, I'll chuck it in here again. Like I'm going to keep saying it throughout the video, but the detail is absolutely phenomenal. It really is. I mean, I'm recording this on a D800. So, you know, 36 to a 40. It shouldn't be that much of a jump. But I, in the Leica sense, well, the Leica camera itself, I can actually see that there's a much better control of sharpness and, and structure detail um, compared to the Nikon, um, which I never thought, because I absolutely love the, uh, the D800. absolutely love it. Um, I love it. I loved it so much. I've got two. So, you know, it's, it's quite interesting to see different camera makes, like how they control the image itself. Again, this is the same bridge. Not particularly happy with this one. I like the composition from it going from right to left. I don't like that I completely missed that there is a tree in the bottom corner. If uh, going back to this, I should really look more uh, of how I'm compositioning and make sure that like stuff like this isn't missed. Um, I think it was about to rain, so I think I just quickly grabbed it and did it. But I 100% think that if I was going to do this shot again, um, I would make sure that there is no... Um, this tree isn't here and so there's a lot more negative like this white space for the bot the top and the bottom so then i think the image would really be like a much better image than it is i, I like it i just wish i should have uh, seen that tree again this is another detail i just saw it was raining i couldn't do anything i only got the camera for three weeks and i really wanted to just get shooting as soon as possible so i've got these uh, raindrops outside the window again just i mean look how sharp this is this is the 50 mil. What is this on? What have I shot this on? 100 ISO, 500 per second, 2.8. I mean, that is absolutely amazing. The, the, the rendition this camera produces is just it's phenomenal. Um, yeah, I saw this. Uh, skate park, MD skate park. I just fancied it being a pano. I just kind of liked like how we've got the cars in the top corner because there's a car park there. There's like this watery, like sort of, bit near the waterworks and i don't know i just like kind of like the urbanness of it like that that's really what i can kind of say about this one saw this bridge this bridge is quite close to me and i i keep looking at it and i, I still do even with my film cameras and i i don't i still even don't think i've shot it in the right way um i'll get there eventually but i just liked how all the birds are on it and it just i don't know it just kind of looked curious to me i like I've managed to get the lines like sort of close to the bottom of the frame here and like sort of like it's it's being like sort of makes it look rather than it being held down it looks like it's it's you know I just like it I just very I just like it a lot and with all the birds in there you've got the seagulls the crows and everything else you know it just I just liked it and especially with the cloud here behind it was it was just a nice image and I thought oh I'll take it and I was, I was very happy with it uh, again, this was done before uh, May Day, so the, uh, yeah, to so celebrate well the parade and everything on um, this day. So uh, I just liked it. I just liked how 
we've got the blossom in the background, the, the flag, the way it was moving in the wind. We, um, this is a, uh, a war memorial garden, so that's why you've got like the doves of peace here with all the poppies and everything. And I just kind of like that the car was there. I think it's a BMW actually. If I can, I mean, look, we can even see that it's a BMW. This is how sharp the files are. Um, just how it was there, just kind of like brings it back to to today's time, but remembering the past. That's how I kind of envisioned it anyway. But uh, I, I I did like this one. Again, saw this. This is a photo. I can't remember the photographer who it was, and I should have done a bit of research before the video. But I they do a lot of abstracty stuff like this. And I saw this a couple of times and I walked past it both times. And in the end, I had to come back this way. And I thought, no, I'm going to stop myself and take it. And I'm kind of happy the way it came out. And I didn't want the bird in it. Um, but I kind of think it makes it something. I don't know I, why. I don't really know. It just I just kind of like the reflections in the water and the composition of it. Um, you know, it, it's everyone's taste, isn't it? That's what I love about photography. One person can absolutely love something and another person might have an opinion that they, they don't like it or they suggest you could have done something else. But, you know, photography is a massive umbrella and we all have our own styles and niches in it, which are, this is why I really like it. This, again, was just me practicing zone focusing. Uh, I heard this guy on his Harley basically revving it up and coming down the, down the uh, street and I just turned, literally turned around and just clicked it. And I don't think I did a too bad a job. I mean, it is a little soft in the edges. Do you know what I mean? I think the car, no, I don't know, actually. But it's nice, do you know what I mean? I, I just like it. It's a good representation of me trying to zone focus. It's not 100% pin sharp, but it's it's good enough for what I want to achieve. Again, estuary, me messing about with lines and just trying to, you know, it's very hard when you come from a DSLR camera, when you've got your eye closed and your camera's up there and you, you, you focus in and you, you can instantly see what's in focus. With the Leica system, you know, you have a range finder. We've said previously how the images overlap your, your point of sharpness and the whole viewfinder is in focus. It was a really big and quick learning curve for me. Um, but toward the end, I kind of got more used to it and I really, actually really enjoyed it. Um, again, this is another image that I really like. I just like how the path flows there. You've got people walking on there. You've got like the little signage. It's just people, some people don't like, like having signs in it. They say it distracts from the image, but I just think it makes it real. Like this is a real shot in, in a normal average day and the colors as well. I just thought it looked quite autumnal. Yeah, this is another one. I really like this. Uh, in the park, there's a load of seagulls around. We're, near, we're based basically like five minutes away from the ocean. Um, and I saw this, and I think I said this was like land meets water or sea meets land or something like that. Um, I just, again, just like how you had all the green grass here. You have this, you know, the seagull that is known to be on land and also water and all the water across. And I just liked how both of them merged one in this image so that's that's i really like this one i get seen this image a load of times and i don't know if really i nailed it for this one i think i might have done on film better than i had on this digital image it just it hasn't got the depth that i was really looking for i mean you know it is pin sharp and you can see the, I mean, you here, you can see the fall off into the, into the focus area here. You know, it is very sharp, but I think, you know, here I've, I've washed out the background. It isn't fantastic. You know, it isn't, a, it's not an amazing image. Um, it's okay. It's, it, I achieved what I wanted it to, but it's not the best. This is funny. This, I just saw this and I, I thought it was really random. So I thought it'd be a really good way of, um, testing out the color system on the Leica. And this is 100% like what I saw. You know, this is like this luminescent pink and like a very pale pink as well. It just, it's just fantastic. And also look, look how sharp, again, I keep going on about the texture and the quality of it. It's just, you know, it's absolutely amazing. Like it picks up the imperfections in the paint where he's double sprayed there and like the, in, in the imperfections in the wall itself. You know, it is absolutely fantastic. What did I uh, take this on? This was at 4.8, 800 ISO. 
just you know it is unreal love this one local cinema love the colors of this it reminded me a little bit of um sort of the portrait portrait overcast vibe of it when i when i was looking at it like in real life and the light has just absolutely nailed it i mean the colors are fantastic i i love this image um okay fine it's a cinema but i just i just love it because of all the the textual detail you know you i mean look you can really see every bit of detail in it you know from from all across the, the page the image sorry um oh i just love it just absolutely love it uh this was one that i just happened to see when i was walking through town i just kind of liked how the flags were going how the clock tower was you know it was i mean just just look again i sorry i keep going on about the detail but i was blown away by this i really was um this i actually converted to i think i did it in a in a pano in the end um i just liked how this is a local bike company and it just says you know vehicles and contents are left here entirely at their own risk and this is one of their things it's just left there i just found that quite funny <laughs> again walking through town this is a very old part of the town and i just saw this uh mother with her child there just walking up and it just i don't know just kind of like a nice urban scene within cornwall just kind of shows that everyone's used to all the picturesque stuff down here but this is a very old town you know it's it, it's in a bit of a regeneration sort of project shall i say um but i just love it I just love the way it is overgrown and it's just a bit gritty which i quite like this didn't turn out at all well this is a car up for me i've seen it walk past it dozens of times always wanted to take a photo and this is not the best photo of it at all so we'll move on love this i love this this reminds me of my childhood just playing cricket and just having a good time but you know everyone's limited to what they have so we've got two garages clearly either owned by the same person because you've got rich you know canary yellow paint and bright red probably like manchester united paint back in the day you know overgrown you've got the ivy that's obviously attacked it over the years and look you've got the, the someone's painted cricket um god what are they called pillars i don't know but they've got they've been playing cricket against it and i just love that i thought that was a really nice little sort of urban story there a uh, new house being built um literally again down the road really because like i said i only had three weeks of the camera so i was kind of limited where i could take it and i didn't have anything planned um but i just i just like the textual detail of this and again it, you know you can see absolutely everything in this sensor and it's just it really does capture what the eye sees i know that sounds really weird but sometimes, you know, I'm sure people have take, took a photo, like I said earlier, and I thought it was fantastic. You bring it back to the computer and it's actually not what you expected. Again, saw this bright yellow uh, a bath here with the, with the row. I actually shot this quite wide, um, but with the intention that I was going to use it as a pano. And again, I just, just think it looks lovely. I just like the composition of it. Bright yellow against everything else here. Just, just kind of stood out to me. Um, sit by the river. I called this one brilliant. I think there's two of these in here. Um, I just liked how the church was in the background, the benches in the foreground, the way the river starts flowing around. It just gives you a nice, like, serene feel and look. I really enjoyed it. This I really like. So the swans here, they go up and down all over the place. And I really wanted to capture them, like, in a more natural sense than just being, like, super close to you, which I don't really like. I was walking around. I saw this. This is again a wide that I've cropped to a pano. Saw this log in the right, and that's what I was focusing on really. So I wanted you, I really wanted your eye to be drawn from the right of the log, following it down, and then to the swans on the left. Some people might just look at the swans and then go back, but I just wanted that nice flow of two subjects within one image. And I think, I think I nailed it for that one. See, here we are. Here's the wide. Um, some people might like this and like again you can see this is the wide and that's the uh, cropped version of it this is another one where i wish i looked and and just me trying to learn the uh, the range finder saw these basically you know disheveled trees and just absolutely loved the way they looked and just like how bare they were and i thought this again this is going to look fantastic in black and white and i, I like 
And what's happened here, I love the rendition of it. The, the textual detail is absolutely phenomenal. The clouds are a little bit uh, blown out in the background. What I don't like is this on the light here. I wish this would have been cleaned up. I should have looked at it. And I can do it in Photoshop or Capture One or whatever. I can get rid of this, but I, I prefer to have leave my images as raw as possible and only crop as and when needed. This is another section of trees. I captured this in color and uh, black and white. The black and white just stands out to me for some reason. I don't know what it is. I don't know whether because of all the different colors, it was just a bit too much. Um, but again, just really like it. This is, this is an image that I wanted to take. This is an old train line bridge used many, many years ago. I think it was done for coal, I think, um, back in the day. And um, I just love it. It just looks absolutely fantastic. <coughs> Excuse me. I shot this in color. Um, it didn't look right. So then again, I converted it to the uh, monochrome in, within the camera itself on the JPEG setting. And I like it. I see it is a bit blown out here to the right, but I think it works. It kind of gives it a bit of a nostalgic feel to it. I don't know, like a very like light, um, not a heavy contrast film. I don't know what it is about it, but I just, just kind of like the look of it. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, this is a, another image that I saw. Um, just I just like cars that have got covers on or half covered. It just makes an interesting subject, this old Z3 BMW. So I just, just, just liked it. Again, this is something zone focused. I saw it. I took it. I, I would love this to be completely like not blown out and like wishy washy, but I'm afraid it is. I just loved how this single bird was on this pole with all the telegraph pole uh, wires coming into it, and it's just this starling is just sat there, just enjoying the day. I just kind of liked it, but I wish I um I had it down. What did I have this on? I think it was about. Yeah, yeah, about, I was going to say F5 or something. So yeah, 4.8. I would have liked this to probably be shot at about F8, something like that, just to de, um, just to get rid of um, it being overexposed. This is another thing. I liked it. Didn't work. This is an image that completely did not work on digital. I've shot this on film and it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, it just didn't work on, on this sensor. And that's the thing with photography. Sometimes a tool just is very good at one thing and not good at another. And I just, it didn't, it just didn't bring the the warmth of this sort of copper, um, like, I just say tan, but it's stained, isn't it? This stained wood, like to the contrast of the cream. Just, just, I haven't, I haven't managed to capture it at its best on, uh, on the Leica. Uh, this is uh, basically in my back garden. And I just like the, the symmetry and, and the, the lines to it, it's just, I don't know, it's a very, ab it's a, a very, very abstract thing, but I just kind of in enjoyed it, just just liked it. And now these are going on to the end now, but this was very late. I think it was very late. Maybe eight, nine o'clock. When does it say that I took it? Does it say that I took it? Oh, no, sorry. So 6.45. So 6.45, I took this. It's going dark here in the in winter in the UK. And the clouds would just have this lovely formation. But all the lights were turning on. It was, you know, it's getting dark. Like, you know, everyone's there. I shot this at 3,200 ISO. And, you know, it's incredible, really. I just, yes, fine. You can see a bit of noise color cast in here. To be fair, that's probably me in the editor more than the sensor itself. Um, just how I wanted it to look personally, because it, it, I have to admit, it, it didn't look like this. I have edited and tweaked this slightly, but I just think it looks brilliant. And I think there's another one. Yeah, there is. Yeah. So this is more natural that came out of the camera. Again, I just, just liked how you have all the houses here and this amazing cloud formation was there. It was so surreal. And this is more of when you have a camera and you just have to take a photo, you don't think about it. You just, I know I need to take a photo of it. And that is it. It's just absolutely brilliant. It really is. It really is. If I had to pick one that I'm, I just absolutely love. If no, I'm going to pick two. So I'd say my first one is the swans. I absolutely love that image. And I, I'm, you know, for me personally, I'm really proud of it. I think it's absolutely fantastic. And the next one is definitely going to be this.
I just love how, for me personally, I've managed to capture water, ground, earth, sea, bird. It's just uh, the whole th like elements in one, and I just uh, I just really like it. Right, guys, that's the end of today's video. Again, sorry about uh, the mess up. I did want to have my face like in the corner of the screen, but it just when I realised that the uh, D800 didn't record, um, it's kind of hard because it's a long video, so I don't want to re remake it and I've got limited time. But anyway, thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed the images. Uh, I will be bringing you film content as well. I know I've promised it. I've shot a load of roles now. Uh, I'm going to get some developed at the uh, lab for the colour ones, and I'm also going to get my black and white ones developed myself. So hopefully we'll have some uh, content of me, how I develop my... A black and white film how i scan my black and white film and then just basically reviewing some of my favorite shots of the month or something like that but anyway guys thank you so much for all the love and support that you showed in the uh, last couple of videos as well it really is mind-boggling really so thank you so much i really appreciate it and i'll see you all on the next one